understanding of the times that we live in Hunting and gathering first-hand information Challenging definitions of sin I travel the world looking for lovers of the ultimate beauty but never Welcome everybody back to Terra Tech. Oh, sorry, this isn't Terra Tech. This is Angels with Scaly Wings. Last time, Terra Tech episode in a while. I haven't made a Terra Tech episode. <laughs> Last time, we went and saw Lorem. We found an Ixosphere in the park. Ixosphere. Ixum sphere. That's that's about it. The bowling ball. <laughs> hey, it's the same size. I don't know if it has holes in it though. Let's go see Lorem. Now with our exceptionally big pockets to carry it around in, we're gonna go talk to Lorem again. No, it's the magic satchel animation technique. <laughs> <laughs> Everything fits in it. Even your your mount your horse. Griffin. There you are! Come in! Sure. Honestly, I can't believe you agreed to do this again! Aw, oh, he's so cute when he's blushing. You're making him sound like he... You just made him sound like he says, go away. <laughs> I don't believe it either! <laughs> it's my pleasure. I don't believe it either! How'd you get me back here? <laughs> I wish there was an option saying, please keep Ipsum away. <laughs> well, what's wrong with him? I don't like him. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Now that I've had a chance to work through everything from last time, we can do some real work. Sounds great. I did a staggering amount of research on mythical humans. Here, let me show you some of the stuff I found. Sure. He sat down at the coffee table. Lorem opened up the laptop and started to type away. Seeing the laptop brought back memories. In our world, they had become an obsolete. They had become obsolete a long time ago. Before I show you these images, I should probably tell you that some of them are really weird. Just don't take them the wrong way. You already told me about the four-headed human, so I think I can handle this. All right. He looks friendly. He looks attractive. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> he looks friendly. This one is supposed to be one of our ancestors. Ancestors. Well, it does remind me of some of the dragons I've seen here, but I'm not sure what humans have to do with this. You remember the myth about our creator turning into a dragon, right? I don't think yeah. I've heard that one before. You didn't tell me about it. <laughs> Totally didn't tell me about it. Yeah. Now here's an interesting question. What species did that human turn into? There are a number of dragon species nowadays that aren't genetically compatible with each other. Did the humans choose one of them? Did they perhaps procreate? A shared ancestor is one option. This would mean that the different species split up after the human's involvement in our creation. If human DNA was involved in some way, this might explain how our different species came to be. Take a far ancestor of ours, apply various amounts of human DNA. The results would be a number of different species, each with a different amount of resemblance to humans. This is getting weird. Not interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> now it has been said that an upright stance and being able to walk on two legs is more human trait. Most humans can walk on two legs. That's I'm right. not sure I'd agree with that. Most people are <laughs> fucking infants. They crawl around on four legs. Or rather, two knees and two hands. <laughs> Mo most get... people on the internet shouldn't be able to fucking walk on two legs yet. They're all in wheelchairs. <laughs> that's, that's a mean thing to say. I knew. 
It's, it's Most humans like walk on two legs. That's true. Yeah. With the occasional that's born without legs or arms. In any case, it's one of the things that makes humans unique. As a result, some people believe that certain species share more traits with humans than others. They think it makes them more noble or something. Luckily, this doesn't happen often. You can walk on two legs as well, right? Sure. In this theory of shared de human DNA, this puts me somewhere in the middle, since I still have wings and horns. I can see that. Here, look at this one. It looks like Grandma. <laughs> Grandma wants to give you some cookies! What's with the horns? What's with the little horns? Since we don't know what the original human looked like, we can't exactly define which traits separate us from them. As a result, our interpretations of humans can vary wildly. I'm not sure if he's particularly a, if he's a particularly friendly one, though. Actually, I think this is supposed to be a human female. Looks quite accurate. <laughs> That's what you said last time. I looked at my mother this morning. It looks accurate. <laughs> okay. Don't let your mom see it. <laughs> I'm not saying my mother's a bad person. She just looks pissed off all the time. Aww. <laughs> there are some things I don't think humans are friendly. Th there are some that don't think humans are friendly at all, though. Really? So far, I've only heard positive things about us. Some interpretations of our myths don't exactly paint you in the best light. There are also people who oppose the idea of human worship and what their involvement has meant for us. In what way? They say human interference was unnatural and that we needed to go back to our roots. And how do they think they can do that? Apparently it means refusing to use modern technology and living in caves or the wilderness again. Like an animal. Pretty much. Most of us think those people are crazy though. As long as they aren't hurting anyone. As long as they aren't hurting anyone. They're harmless, really. You probably won't see one of them around here anyway. This is an interesting style, though. Do you know how these pictures were made? No. I'm sure the information was provided when I looked them up in the library. But I didn't copy all of that. And you're using these as references. I make do with what I can get. Maybe now you can see why I wanted your help, though. Alright, what do you need me to do? I just want to make some quick sketches. You can stand over there by the wall. Okay, I can certainly do that. Walked up to the spot indicated, and when I took my place, I saw that he had laid out a number of pens, paper, and other supplies on the table. Oh, this is gonna take a while, isn't it? I'll try to be quick about it. You want me to strike a pose or something? A T-pose would be good to get started. What's that? Just point your arm sideways so you look like a giant T. Oh, I get it. Raising my arms to the side, I wondered how long this would take. Great. Now try to stay as still as possible. I'm already Can regretting Can I still talk? <laughs> Can I still talk? <laughs> I'm already regretting this. <laughs> sure. As long as you don't talk Aww. with your arms. As I wasn't allowed to move my head, I stared at Lorem sketching my figure. This went on for a few minutes until I suddenly heard the sound of a door opening. See, right here he actually looks kind of cute. I, I have to agree. In that in that image he looks adorable, but I fucking hate him still. Oh. Hey, Lorem! Hey. Alright, the human was going to be visited today. I totally forgot about that. You don't mind if I take a seat, right? You just want to study for Rhea. Like you aren't doing that right now. Besides, this room is mine as much as it is yours. I'll just watch and be quiet. I thought you had experiments to run. And they're running. I'd rather not be confined to my tiny room for the next two hours, staring at the ceiling and waiting for them to finish. But no experiments on Faria. Yeah, I'll just sit here. Maybe take a few notes. I'm sorry, Faria. 
This is my roommate and longtime best friend, Ipsum. Nice to meet you, Ipsum. His scientific bluntness may be off-putting, so please bear with him. Speak for yourself! So much for those two being best friends. Lorem returned to his drawing, the silence only being interrupted by strokes of his pen. Something interesting happened at work today. Did they finally figure out it was you who was playing all those pranks? No, they'll never catch me. I was talking with a colleague about the humans here, and I offhandedly mentioned that Faria was going to come over. I don't like where this is going. Some hours later, Anna barges into my office and says Faria is off limits to anyone besides her as far as tests and experiments are concerned. <laughs> well, I'm not taking any samples. I could hardly be blamed for just looking at Faria. Yes, but that makes me wonder, Faria, did you agree to visit her and undergo her rigorous testing regimen? I did. I did. And she was very kinky about it. <laughs> oh, good luck to you then. Oh, and Delorum, have you seen my Ixorman Sphere recently? Didn't you take it with you when we went to the park the other day? Yes, I did. Well, that's the last time I saw it. I must have lost it then. I already searched the whole apartment. Did you go into my room? No. <laughs> Maybe someone found it. I had it registered in my name when I got it, so if anyone found it, it should turn up sooner or later. I remembered the sphere that I had found in the park and dug into my pocket to show it to them. Wait a minute, are you talking about... Hey, no moving around! Quickly, I extended my arms again to make a perfect T-pose. Sorry, I just found something in the park recently that, you, that may or may not be your Ximen sphere. Where is it? Probably in one of my pockets. At these words, Ipsum got up and walked over to me. So much for just sitting quietly in the corner and letting me work in peace. We're talking about the very expensive piece of equipment here. Just give it to him, Faria. I searched my pockets and looked for the sphere to no avail. Huh, it's not the here. So you don't have it after all. What kind of cruel joke are you playing here? Must have left it in my apartment. What a shame. I could fetch it later after we're done with this. It would be better if you had just handed it to the police. After all, we don't even know if it was my sphere that you found. Either way, the police should be able to verify it and locate its owner. Alright. What's an Ixaman sphere anyway? Well, it's a ramen it's night, I guess. just a glorified toy for grown-ups, really. You have no idea of what you're talking about. An Ixelman Sphere is a very sophisticated tool with a countless number of uses. Like what? First off, I use mine as a vibrator. <laughs> <laughs> it's a freaking bowling... It's the size of a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> so, he, he, yeah. It's a bead. Huh? It's a bead. He shoves it in. It's a, okay, I guess if, if there's a bead attachment to the X-Men Sphere, the Sphere itself is a bowling ball size. <laughs> Just strap a dildo on the end of it. That much? No, they, they mentioned it when he found the Sphere. It's about the size of a bowling ball. Just, just like fucking stick a dildo on it. There you go. <laughs> Set I it to vibrate. To <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you put your phone on vibrate or your controller on vibrate. Like what? It can levitate and follow you around, take photos, you can even use it as a calculator. Making it into a glorified toy for grown-ups. I use it for my experiments. Well, if they can take photos, I wouldn't need to stand around like this. That is, if we had it here now. It is a great companion for all situations in life. 
It's much easier to draw from a live model than from a photo, though. Easier for you, maybe. I hope this doesn't take much longer because my arms went numb a while ago. Yeah, I think you can relax for now. I'm nearly done with this one. A tingling sensation went up my arms as I relaxed. Slowly, I began to regain feeling in them. Alright, now turn around. I thought we were done already. Not unless we want our humans to lack a backside. So that's what this is all about. Ugh, you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. Isn't it my turn to draw you now? That's not how this works. I wouldn't mind getting a portrait of myself. I can already see it. The light shining from above, caressing my luscious mane, highlighting each as each lock as they interplay. This is gonna be a long day. That depends on how fast you are. <laughs> as I was now facing the wall, I couldn't see what Lorem and Ipsum were doing. After a few seconds of silence, I heard some whispering coming from the couch. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't want to be rude, but I was just curious about your vestments. He said, and I quote, This would be more interesting if it wasn't for those clothes Furry is wearing. I see how it is. Or I really see how it is. <laughs> I'm just saying it would be hard to study an insect if there was a piece of cloth draped over it. Wearing that much just seems odd to me. If humans wear clothes like this, it's only appropriate to depict them as such. And my scientific curiosity shall remain unsatisfied. Because Faria's not here to do that. And you would get in big trouble with Anna. We actually have a pretty big variety of vestments. I could tell you about it. It sounds good, but not right now. I have to finish this up first. All right. So Ipsum, I've heard a, a lot about experiments and science now, but what do you actually do? I work in the facility as a biologist with a minor in physics. In addition to the office, I also have my own setup here at home. I assure you, it's properly insulated, isolated from the rest of our apartment. It even has a fume hood to prevent accidents. But I only use it for the smallest of experiments. Usually things unrelated to my job. Sounds interesting. Sounds boring now. <laughs> Sounds interesting. To me it's interesting. Don't get them started or we won't hear the end of it. Maybe you, maybe you would like to talk about your hobby instead, Lorem. Isn't this already a hobby? I guess you could say so. I was talking about this other hobby, though. Oh, that. I don't know, it's a little embarrassing, to be honest. There's no need to be embarrassed about your hobbies. He likes flowers. Once, he even made a crown out of daisies. Cutest thing in the world. Don't listen to him. As usual, he only tells half the story. What's the What's other half, then? I have an extensive love for botany. I hear something. It doesn't sound usual. The fern he keeps in his room must be the happiest plant alive. I find gardening to be very relaxing, especially when the birds are singing in the morning. It's so nice to go out there and have a nice cup of tea and work in the garden of our apartment building. Which reminds me, if some here has a quite an extensive tea collection. Although I'm not sure if he prefers to hoard tea or gadgets, it's a mystery. I heard there was going to be a model of the Ixaman Sphere that can actually make tea. That's going to be a most buy. It can also make cups? Or are you supposed to sip it out of the sphere itself? Don't be silly. You two sound just like an old couple. Couple? <laughs> Us? Not really. We've known each other for a long time, though, if that counts. Yeah. I think it does. By the way, Ipsum, you're not from here, right? What is that supposed to mean? 
Well, you look nothing like any other dragon I've seen here so far. Except for the old ice cream man. <laughs> I suppose that it's true for Lorem as well. You're both pretty small. But you, Ipsum, also have hair. That's certainly new. It's not un unusual as you might think, but you're right. There aren't many of us in these parts. I imagine being smaller than the rest of the population would come with its own challenges. It's not that big a deal. It's If something is unreachable for me, I can fly. This apartment was actually intended to house one dragon of a bigger size. That not only makes it very cheap, but it's also big enough for both of us. There's one thing I've been wondering. How do you even sit on one of those chairs? Wouldn't the backrest cause problems with your tails? I see what you mean. For me, it's never been a problem because most chairs are bigger than I am. It's just a question of getting into the right position. However, this might be different from those of us who mostly walk on four legs, but they usually don't use chairs like these at all. I've seen a few try, though. I suppose they just want to imitate humans in this way. Even if they can't stand or walk like a human, they can try to sit like one. With varying results! I've seen... <laughs> some I've seen look really funny, trying to fit in chairs they were too big for, or sitting in odd ways that clearly don't work with their anatomy. I see. Lorem, you've asked me about breath weapons last time, but I don't think you ever told me if you had one. Probably because it isn't worth mentioning. It may only be a very small flame, but it can get very hot. What about you, Ipsum? Yes, Ipsum. What about you? <laughs> My breath weapon is elocution, since words are more powerful than anything else. Sure. Or same as mine, then. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So it doesn't matter which one of those you talk about? No, 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 it doesn't. Alright, I'm done with this one. You can turn around. Really? But staring at the wall was so much fun! Go ahead! <laughs> sure. Alright. Let's make one more. Maybe something dynamic. How dynamic are we talking about? Something that isn't static like the reference models I just did. Uh, you can strike a pose, something that's just you. Alright. What kind of pose should I go for? A, a swimwear sw pose! Swimwear. <laughs> <laughs> no, this won't, be, this won't be a problem if you choose that. Aww. I can't go, go with a swimwear it. pose? <laughs> I said it, won't, it will not be a problem if you choose it. Okay, I'm going swimwear pose. I did I did thoughtful pose last time I was here. Do it. Draw me like one Draw of your. Draw me like one of your. My what? Uh, forget what I said. <laughs> sure. Blushy. By the way, did you get the groceries when you came home from work? Yes, just as usual. Are you too sure you're not in a relationship? I certainly am. Actually, Ipsum is deeply in love with his home laboratory. Oh, really? I'm not even going to deny that. When I'm not working on something at the office, I do so here. What are you currently working on? I've been looking into physics of teleportation. You're talking about the portal, right? Well, I don't have permission to even approach the portal, so I have to resort to a theoretical discussion on its mechanics and make do with what I can pull off in my home laboratory. Maybe I can tell you a few things. That won't be necessary. I already have read all the available test reports. Okay. Are you aware that using the portal could be incredibly dangerous? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Then you don't have a complete understanding of what the portal actually does and what it means for our world at large. In a portal for a portal to function, a natural wormhole is required. It is trapped and becomes the portal's entry. The portal manipulates the wormhole's exit this way, 
something can be sent to whichever destination is chosen. Now, is a, there is a theory about the purpose of natural wormholes in the universe. It states that they act as the support pillars of the space-time continuum. How so? Hmm, how should I explain this? And I kind of just want to skip over this fucking conversation because it's long, boring, and tedious. To put it short, the wormholes are like glue, uh, gluing the edges of your world, making it look like it's round, even if it could be flat. Exactly. There you go. We're done. <laughs> go ahead. Press control. Hold down control. You just go. Brrr. Just hold it down. Just hold it down. Don't be afraid. It's but I am afraid. <laughs> it's not going to skip any choices. Just, just hold it. There you go. There you go. I can't stand him. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what you choose. He sounds fun. <laughs> he certainly keeps things interesting around here. And he's a good art critic. I can imagine. Anyway, it looks like we're done here. Whew, feels good being able to move again. Would you like to stay for dinner? It'd be the least I can do to compensate for your lost afternoon. Let me see, what time is it? It's getting late. I probably shouldn't have stayed out this long. Looks like I'll have to decline for now. I see. Well, I've got to do something for you at least. Don't worry about it. Maybe some other time. If you say so. And thanks for doing this. At any rate, it's been a huge help. Yeah, I know. Don't worry about it, really. All right. I should really get going now. Sure. Take care. <laughs> you just swapped voices. I know, um, I know. After I did, I just fucking swapped voices. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, uh, one other thing that Ips, uh, Ips, Ipsum actually mentions as well is that it, how going back in time so many times can make holes in the space-time continuum, which is allowing us to remember things, you know, like how we have items from the other other playthroughs. It's kind of that's what it's pointing at. It's like every time you go back, there's a chance you'll still have these items. You'll you'll have memories, like when you call. Spend the day reading. Well, go ahead. Do it. The next day. Intuition. Okay. Af News to me. The intuition card. Yay. And with the intuition card comes the end of this episode. If you liked what you have seen, boys and girls, make sure to click that like button or thumbs up, whichever you wish to refer to it as. Subscribe if you had not, and I will see you lovelies in the next episode. See you guys then.